I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I was delighted that uh, Professor Kato uh, was willing to bring me in here. And uh, I just saw my very own advisor is also here, Dr. Dan Southers. I feel, I feel very uh, appreciative of uh, him coming. Thanks so much. All right. Um, so the topic um, is uh, how do we decode this uh, traditional Chinese theater? When we go visit China, uh, you are very likely to be brought into a Chinese theater and you are very likely to be shown with this art form. And my job today is basically to offer you several little uh, cues to help you to understand the elements within this uh, traditional Chinese theater. And uh, I have three sections. So basically, I will spend a lot of time talking about uh, the situ row types, four situ row types. And then I will talk about the situ painted faces. And then I will wrap up with uh, the little details such as the props, costumes, or makeup uh, in situ performances. So the literally xi qu is translated as xi, drama, theater, or opera, and qu uh, is uh, uh, music, right? So combining xi and qu together, it's drama music. And uh, sometimes people also call it traditional sound dance theater. Uh, sometimes people also call it indigenous sound dance theater, and it is also translated into theater of the sound verse. So I'm a translator by training. In the situ world, we actually just prefer the direct term situ rather than uh, calling it uh, traditional Chinese theater or uh, Chinese opera. But you will hear me using this uh, terms today. Um, situ combines four different performative skills here. They are singing, speaking, dance acting, an acrobat. So in Mandarin Chinese, they are chang, singing, nian, speaking or recital, dance acting, zuo, and da, acrobat. And uh, this is particularly why when we call it uh, Chinese opera, the term does not necessarily convey the four performative skills because uh, opera uh, emphasize the side of the singing, uh, while it's actually emphasizing chang, nian, zuo, da uh, in situ performances. So the first section is about roles of uh, situ, and there are four. And the first one is sheng, or all male characters. And the second one is dan, all female characters. And uh, I will get into them one by one. But here, as you can see, this uh, guy is uh, doing a little acrobat here. And uh, this is basically him. Uh, this is a um, show about uh, Wu Song going to um, in the woods and uh, conquer the tiger. Right. So, and uh, this is Dan, all female characters. Uh, I will get into the details about it. And Jing. Uh, the painted face and the chou uh, being translated as a clown. So I will actually skip Jing today because I want to talk about this in the section of the painted face. Um, but um, the first one is Sheng, all male characters. And in Sheng, we have many different subcategories. And if we look at these uh, three screenshots here, the first one is Xiao Sheng younger male. And uh, when somebody is holding a fan here, we call them fan, shan zi sheng, uh, the fan sheng. And uh, this is from the show uh, Picking Up the Jade Bracelet, where this guy's name is Fu Peng, and he really uh, fell in love with this young woman, Sun Yu Jiao, and he uh, dropped a bracelet on the floor as a love token. And uh, this is basically what the story is about. 
And when you see a little older uh, male, you see this sort of uh, representation here. And this is uh, Mi Heng from Ji Gu Ma Cao. Uh, Mi Heng is this guy uh, who really has a problem with this. Another guy, Cao Cao, who is always suspicious of things and uh, doubting other people. And he was uh, uh, having a quarrel with uh, Cao Cao. We'll see in the painted face section in a moment. And this one, as you probably can tell, he carries a lot of energy here, right? And he carries a sword and his whole costume here is very tidy, very organized, um, very crisp or crispy, right? So this is the warrior type of the man, uh, male character. So we call them Wu Sheng. So we have Xiao Sheng, younger male, and uh, Lao Sheng, older male, and uh, Wu Sheng the warrior type, the acrobatic type. So following with Sheng, we have Dan, all female characters. And if you happen to know a guy uh, in your life whose name is Dan, that's literally how you pronounce it, Dan. And uh, all female characters, and let's take a look. So we have different subcategories as how Sheng is working. Here we have this uh, uh, Qing Yi here. Uh, Qing Yi basically talks about uh, young female who are very graceful, very elegant. They um, walk in smaller steps. They sit uh, very straight. They kind of uh, give you this sort of dignified feeling. And this is Zhang Huoding, who is uh, uh, a famous Sichu performer who came visit uh, visited America in 2015, and he performed in the Lincoln Center. And uh, on the other hand, we have this Hua Dan. As you can probably tell, this Hua Dan is very energetic and uh, full of life, and sometimes they are a little bit self uh, indulgent. So you can see the difference here for the Qing Yi style, she is kind of holding her arm, just standing there and sing, right? For the Hua Dan, she's kind of having a lot of uh, hand gestures and uh, move around quickly and suggesting things. They're usually servants for their uh, female mm, young masters. So uh, those are two drastic different uh, characteristics here. So the, this, in this slide, you can probably tell that uh, these two are pretty uh, fighty or acrobatic. They know a lot of weapons or they do a lot of martial arts, things like that. But the difference is this one is called Dao Ma Dan, the sword course Dan. And um, this is called Wu Dan, literally the warrior type. So um, for Dao Ma Dan, you will see the flags at the back, they are usually the magnification of uh, the uh, military order. Right? I'm, I'm carrying order. Uh, I have duty here. I'm on mission. And they are usually very good at, uh, good at uh, handling weapons. And um, on the other hand, uh, for this sort of wu dan, you can you can tell they have very crispy costume. They don't have all these uh, web style uh, costume here. Uh, you can see here they it's very tidy, it's very crisp. So this sort of rose, they are very good at uh, fighting uh, in very close distance. You know, in martial arts, some people are really good at using weapons, but some people are really good at using their hands and fight in very short distance. Okay, so Qing Yi, the elegant ones, Hua Dan, the dynamic ones, and uh, Dao Ma Dan with the flags, and uh, Wu Dan with um, a close body fight. And here, um, okay, if we look at this, okay, this woman is wearing this uh, darker color costume, and on the head we have silver hair bun, um, we, and uh, if we look a little bit closer, she's holding a walking stick. This is Lao Dan, the older female Dan. So they are usually mother or grandmother. And uh, the person sitting, standing right next to this uh, older female Dan is uh, Cai Dan, the colorful Dan. And I don't know if you can tell, but this was performed by a guy 
And Haidan's jobs are basically to ease up the tension, bring laughter to the theater, to the audience, or to the play. So uh, again, this is an older female Dan. This is Haidan, the colorful Dan. This is just the direct, literally direct translation. OK, so we talked about Sheng, we talked about Dan. And uh, since I mentioned, I'll skip Jing because I want to talk about Jing in the painted face. And uh, let's directly move to Chou. Chou, um, if we ask what does it mean in Mandarin Chinese, we say oh, it means uh, hideous, ugly, grotesque, things like that. And so sometimes people, it's acknowledged that it is translated as a clown. Um, but it, uh, this role often refers to the comic or earthy males. And in Chou, we have the warrior type too, and we have the civilian type as well. So I don't know if you still remember several slides ago, we had that uh, Wu Sheng who was uh, very soldiery, who had a lot of energy, whose eyes were wide open, carried a sword. That guy was literally fighting with this guy, and this guy is a Chou. So Chou are usually our Chou. The, the, the uh, makeups are usually represented or um, being shown with a dab of the whiteness on the face around the nose area. And if you see that, you know that's a Chou role. And as you can probably tell, they move a lot. They carry a lot of energy too. So they are the warrior type of the Chou. Conversely, we have um, we have this uh, civilian sort of cho who only talks, who engage into uh, conversations, and this is uh, this woman was wronged with a crime she committed, and he is tasked with escorting her, and she he was talking with her, and sometimes uh, he would play a joke, speaking directly to the audience and. Uh, uh, make jokes to ease up this heavy feeling. And I want to point your attention to this um, prop here. As you can see, this is to show her hands are all locked. This is show this is showing that she is a criminal. She has committed a crime, but she was wronged. But you can tell this was designed in this very fancy, nice fish shapes. So uh, this is a highly aesthetic art form. And going one slide back, and this is the um, uh, warrior type I was talking about, and this is called On the Crossroad, this show. It's basically talking about how two people are uh, fighting at dark, but you can tell this stage is highly illuminated. But these two performers, they need to pretend they cannot see each other. They are fighting in the dark. They have very limited light sources. And uh, it's an incredible show. And um, it is one of the performances for uh, C2 students to learn. OK. So again, this is the warrior type. This is civilian type of the Chou. So now we can uh, start talking about the Jing, the paint faces. And through that, we can talk about how Xiqu uh, paint their faces. And it's very interesting that Jing in Chinese, it means clean. But obviously, obviously we are painting something on the face. So we say Jing bu Jing. Jing is not clean because we have stuff on our face being painted. Um, but technically, they are in the Sheng category, but uh, they specifically point to people who have very strong personalities. And you will see uh, what I mean by saying that. And there are different colors for, for different uh, face paints. They have a major color. They have a accompanying color. But when you look at the color, when you look at the face paints, you can tell what is a major color, like this one. The major color is red. And this one, the major color is uh, black. And a full um, disclaimer or a information I should mention is that uh, Xichu has many, many, many genres, more than 300 ones, um, while many of them are 
um, disappearing because not a lot of people are practicing them. Um, so we have, for example, in my town, we have Jinju. I'm from Shanxi, which is a vinegar town. In Beijing, we have Beijing Opera uh, or Jinju. And for example, in Henan province, we have Yuju. Um, so, but for today, I'm using a lot of examples from Beijing Opera or Jinju. So if we look at this one, it's red as a major color. This one is black as a major color. If you see somebody getting on the stage with a red painted face, we know, we already know this person is loyal, this person is courageous. And uh, an example can be Guan Yu, I'll show you in a moment. And when you see somebody who uh, entered the stage with this uh, black uh, face painted as a major color, we know this person is candid, but sometimes can be reckless, um, but can be loyal, can be uh, fair-minded, can be straight-minded. So an example can be Bao Zhe. And we also have white ones. I don't know how you feel when you see this directly. Like, what is your direct reaction to this face paint? How do you feel when you see this with the stroke and with how the uh, details and the wrinkle and this and that being depicted? So basically, when you see somebody wearing a white face paint getting on the stage, you know, they are uh, double faced. They are uh, suspicious about a lot of things. They are over suspicious. They don't really trust people. Uh, they may trust you at one moment and they will distrust you the second second. So an example could be Cao Cao. And uh, we have yellow ones, we have uh, green ones, we have blue ones. But I put these yellow ones um, to show that uh, the yellow ones are basically usually showing the fierce people or calculative. They are very good at calculating. They're really good at, oh, am I... Um, by doing this, am I getting something? Or let's play with a lot of um, crafty uh, things. Okay. So this is Cao Cao. And um, remember several slides ago, I said uh, the guy was really having a problem with this guy. And he was uh, beating the drum to kind of have a quarrel with him. And this is Cao Cao. And um, you can see the draw on the face is trying to bring the face a little bit down. So rather than having uh, uh, uplifting lips uh, pointing up, it's pointing down, trying to show that sort of energy. So if we compare this and the face mask here or face paint here, um, you can tell, OK, it's um, pretty similar, but over all these years, different people have developed their different ways of expressing and different ways of painting on the face. But the gist is the same, but different people kind of um, um, have their own version. So that's for the uh, white ones. And this one, Bao Zhen, uh, he's uh, black colored here. And he's very, very straight minded. He's very fair. Uh, he doesn't care if you are the king, you are the emperor. If you made a mistake, we got to punish you. And he is the official being loved by so, so many people because he, he, he could hold the justice. And this little touch on the forehead represent the moon and um, particularly showing how um, showing the justice side of him. And this, so you will see, so for this one and the one next, they are actually uh, in the Qing Dynasty uh, face paint collection. And as I mentioned, as year goes on, different people kind of uptake it and have different versions. So this is a comparison. And the red-faced ones are courageous. Mm, they are loyal. This is Guan Yu. And this is a little comparison here. This is also from the Qing Dynasty, where we, dig the, we dug into the books and saw, oh, this is how they paint the face back then. But as I have mentioned, it's slightly different. It's slightly same. 
Okay. So the last section is uh, basically about the little details of C3, including props, costumes, and makeup. So for example, um, if I ask you, when you see this getting on the stage, when you see a performer getting on the stage holding this, what are they doing and what do they mean? So basically this represents a horse. This is called ma bian horse whip. So if you're carrying this and getting on the stage, that means you are carrying a horse, you're walking with a horse. And when you try to do a uh, mime-like movement to get on the horse, that means you're on the horse. But when you are seeing this being thrown away at the, at the exit side of the stage, that means the horse is either resting, drinking water, or eating grass. And the color of the horse whip would represent the color of the horse. So as you can see, this is what I mean by saying Situ is highly um, conventionalized, highly stylized. We have semiotics to represent things. Whereas in a Western theater, this is the uh, a snapshot in the show called The War Horse, The War Horse, where they use the puppetry, where they brought mm -hmm. these um, horse size, like real horse size, life size horse on the stage and being uh, being manipulated by people mm, under the horse to really show this is a horse. They are talking about the trueness, but in situ we're not talking about the trueness. Things um, on the stage, it could be a stage, it could be somebody's living room, it could be, say, uh, a battlefield, when several different performers taking turns for like three turns on the stage, that means they have traveled for thousands and thousands of miles. So it's very stylized. It's very um, um, kind of uh, subjunctive for the lack of a better word. Okay, so the reason I put these here is because when we go to a Situ theater, we don't just sit around and say, oh, that's a Sheng character, that's a Dan character, that's a uh, Jing character, that's a, that's a Chou character. We don't do that. We sit down and we watch around and we try to decipher, we try to decode what this is about. So this is why I brought this uh, uh, horse whip, which represents horse. And I thought maybe uh, a can be interesting for us to look at how do we do this situ make up um, while watching this um, video. And this uh, image is basically, uh, his name is Mei Lan Feng. He's a guy, he's playing uh, a Dan role here. And he's one of the uh, four major performers in Beijing Opera. And when we look at this, we kind of want to know, okay, how did uh, these parts get on the face? And how did this part get on the face? What about these decorations? So a lot of people are doing um, a work which is about revealing what is going on at the backstage. And uh, this is one example that I found. Uh, this is in Chinese, but the coming video does not have any uh, dialogue in it. Can you see? Can you see the video? Let me see. Yes, we can see it. Okay, cool. Uh, when you hit play, um, it did play. Okay. It, though it's not playing right now. Okay, let me go back a little bit.
as you probably can see, um, at the, in the very beginning, they had this. Uh, so the the whole dried thing are the elm are from the elm tree, and you pour water and you keep squeezing it. Glue will come out. It's a uh, it's natural. It's fully natural. And when you comb it more and more, and more glue will come out. And then you kind of just get those real hair, and you comb through the hair, and then you have that um, tidy, smooth hair string. And then you make a form, and then you kind of put it on your uh, forehead along your uh, face. And uh, as you can probably imagine. It's very cold. It's very, very cold. And when I tried it out, it was icy cold when I when it got on my face. Um, okay, so I think that's pretty much um, what I was about to share. And uh, there are several things I want to uh, stress. For example, several slides ago, um, I didn't mention this. Uh, for the Sheng character, excuse me for the for the Sheng character. When you see this touch of redness on the forehead, that means they are very energetic. They are they have a lot of energy, and um, they they are they are healthy. They are um, full of hope. But sometimes when you see, uh, for example, someone lost their lost their battle, and you would see this part of the this touch of redness would become darker or even black. That shows uh, they are running out of uh, energy and luck, and uh, they are pretty upset. So things like that. And when you, for the younger Sheng, when they talk, they use uh, they sort of dashiao sang, which is um, for example, when they call their, um, let's say he's calling uh, Sun Yujiao, the person he really uh, wants to marry, and he would say, ah, xiao jie. So the xiao is the real voice, but the jie is a kind of the fake voice to show that uh, he's in the stage of transitioning uh, voice, but haven't fully got there yet. But for older ones, they are. Uh, they use very strong, thick, bassy voice. And for Wu Sheng, the warrior type, they fully focus on the acrobat, but sometimes they do sing. And it's OK, because when they, when they do the acrobat, sometimes you have to move around. So when they sing, sometimes they don't get to sing fully. And that's OK, too. OK. Uh, I will stop here and I will see if anybody has any questions. And uh, I'm very happy to share this with everybody to here today. And um, if you have any thoughts or curiosity, I'll try my best to answer. Thank you very much, Yiting. That was, <laughs> I certainly learned a lot. And uh, I, I'm sure the audience enjoyed it. Uh, equally, um, awesome. uh, I'll, I'm making a point next time I'm in uh, China to uh, uh, attend a theater performance, uh, which reminds me, you know, uh, where 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 can we uh, where can we go to uh, see a performance? Not only in Beijing, but you mentioned uh, other places have different styles of theater. Uh, where where would you recommend we uh, go to uh, see performances? Well, so. Our, I guess, UH Manoa, we have the Asian theater, they do these uh, performances quite a bit and they do rehearsals. So if you want to get a feel of how they do it and what they look like at the backstage, uh, we, I think if we ask them, they, they would allow us to shadow. Uh, like Professor Xu Peng is a um, Xichu professor now working for the uh, Asian theater department. And also, um, since COVID, we so we had a lot of like online gatherings for uh, folks to kind of just perform with a camera pointing at themselves. We have a lot of um, on not quite official, but a community um, 
exercise, I guess. And I think I'm pretty sure we have a Situ community and Situ, what's a word for that? Um, Like a, not a club club, but they have a they have a gathering at UH Manoa as well. Um, for so this is something I actually wanted to mention um, for the talk because for uh, situ stages we could say, oh, we go to this uh, contemporary modern theater where um, the theater would replicate the Western theater with, uh, with the entrance and the exit. Um, but back in the day, we have the uh, stage where we have uh, there's a stage here, we have a curtain here, we have a curtain here. So somebody would lift up the curtain and enter from there and perform. And then somebody will lift up a curtain on the right side for them to exit. So if you see like an older theater um, happen, if you happen to see that in China, you could ask around the, from the village people and say, hey, will you, will, do we have any performance? Especially during the holidays. The, um, uh, I, I, I'm curious, you know, one of the areas that I know you've been studying as a, uh, as a uh, uh, communication, a CIS student, uh, yes. is this area of uh, Chinese theater and uh, TikTok, uh, adapting uh, theater to TikTok. Um, what kind of adaptation has there been, uh, have you found, uh, to uh, uh, adopt this ancient art to uh, a modern technology. Yeah, so many, many Situ performers are doing this endeavor to bring Situ through the new media. And uh, short video is definitely one of them. And uh, when I was doing this specifically, how Situ is represented through short video platforms on Douyin or TikTok, um, they have this trend called which translates into who said Situ is not Douyin E or TikTok key. So a lot of people try to just uptick one element of Situ, for example, how they comb the hair just one thing in, in the short video, how to comb the hair, how do we do the makeup, or they highlight a very uh, impressive acrobatic movement through the short videos. And um, they are trying to get a lot of attention, which is happening. And actually a lot of young people are really into uh, the, those uh, C2 uh, knowledge introduction, surprisingly. You know, uh, Anna really uh, 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 raises this question: of, Are are directors still creating new story uh, stories and plays, or are 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 these only for traditional stories? Um, oh yeah, I'm, I'm. That's such a good question. So a lot of uh, troops are doing traditional stories for sure because that's one way for c2 performers to really enhance the most fundamental skills so they are prepared to perform in different uh, different shows um, but directors are definitely creating new stories in place they write new stories they um, perform in situ style and if you're interested Actually, when I was still at NECDA, which is National Academy of Chinese Theater Arts, uh, they cooperated with the uh, University of Maryland at College Park. They used this whole Situ style and performed um, uh, the Shakespeare's play. What's the English for that? Mid, uh, Midsummer, what's the name for that? Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, yes, they, do, they did that. And another very popular, famous, I highly recommend you to watch is uh, Miss Julie. And uh, that's such a uh, successful way, but they did, they did not use Beijing opera, they used the uh, Yu opera style. And uh, Professor Wang Shaojun from the performance department at NECTA uh, was part of the directing. Actually, he was doing quite a bit of the directing. 
Yeah. Um, Kirk Sullivan asks, uh, uh, did you say that a character's makeup might change throughout a single play? And, and does that happen very often? Oh, that's such a good question, too. Uh, the character's makeup might change for sure, uh, but you probably will see the costumes being changed more often throughout the show. So, for example, you would see a uh, female role dressing with the, the water sleeve, very long, very flowy sleeve uh, at the very beginning. And then when she needs to get on the battlefield, she changes into those uh, like flags and uh, sword and spear, things like that. Um, yeah, the, I guess for Sichuan opera, for Chuan Ju, uh, you would see the face paint trick or a mass masterpiece uh, throughout the whole performance um, very like within one second to another. Uh, that's called Chuan Ju Bian Lian, Sichuan Opera changing the uh, face paints. It, it does happen. It does happen. Well, uh, another question uh, from the audience. Uh, do you know of other types of uh, artistic representations of um, the red turning dark color spots uh, on the forehead, which are, are, are not related to opera. Uh, for example, uh, paintings. Uh, red turning dark color spot on the forehead. Oh, I don't know. I practice a little painting and drawing, but I, I am afraid I don't know much about that. Well, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> uh, a, a, a good area for research here. Um, oh. Yeah, I guess they yeah. would. I, I, I can definitely look into that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, 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 I noticed that uh, the, the, uh, maybe because I, 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 I enjoy watching. Uh, uh, popular uh, Chinese films uh, coming out of China now, uh, especially in the martial arts films. Are, 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 have these uh, pop culture films been adapting uh, these Chinese theater techniques to uh, modern films? Oh, yes, absolutely. A lot of the actors and actresses, they are trained by using situ uh, gates and fights the styles. And as a matter of fact, if we look at, for example, Journey to the West, uh, that was in the 80s, a lot of performers, um, they are using situ movements. So for example, nowadays when we um, try to rest, we just rest, you know, we just lie there, but they, uh, they would try to use this in there in the tv show and in the film so that's definitely one representation of situ movements for sure a lot of them are situ performers like jackie chen too so they're, they're not necessarily uh martial artists in the traditional sense that they uh studied martial arts and went into the movies um uh they they may very well be uh uh shichi uh theater actors they, yeah, they are definitely like some of them are sent to situ school when they were really, really, really young. And that's how they do it. Uh, if somebody decided, if I decide to become a situ performer, I don't think that there's a market for me. So they are being trained uh, in situ school since they were like a little kid. What, the, what does it take to become a situ performer? So much sweat, tear, and absolutely hardworking. Uh, I I have a friend who is from Finland, and his name is Elias Estrom. Uh, he he did his master's degree in situ directing, and every time when he came back from uh, Finland, 
and arrive in Beijing, I say, do you want to hang out? And his reaction is always, no, I need to practice. I haven't done today's practice yet. He does not spend one day without practicing. And, and also, I want to add another element. Sometimes danger is also part of it because they need to do really high skilled um, acrobats. For example, uh, they would stand on this table, high table to show that uh, they are determined for their mission. They're done. So they would just um, do a dao jiang shi. Um, jiang shi means zombie, but it's not how that is. But they would just drop themselves straightly on the stage just 90 degree on the stage, which is a very, very, very dangerous movement. A lot of people got into the hospital. And a lot of people can't do performance anymore uh, after accidents. Could you, uh, could, you, could you comment on the role of the audience in deciding who, whose career advances? That's my advisor. <laughs> That's from your 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 dissertation advisor. Yep, uh, Dr. Dan Southers asks me, could you comment on the role of the audience in deciding? Oh, gotcha. Okay, so this happens a lot, especially in Tianjin, uh, which right next to Beijing, a t uh, a city. Uh, so if you go to a theater, and if you as a city performer wants to be acknowledged as a professional. You wanna get, you wanna get, you want to perform in Tianjin, in theaters in Tianjin, because Tianjin audiences are very, very strict about each movements and your expression. And when they really, really love your show, they would say, oh, they would say, oh, like that. And when they really, when you, when you really, kind of messed up some movements, they would say, oh, xia qi bo, xia qi bo, like get, up, get off the stage, get off the stage. So if you get, if you pass the test in Tianjin, you're good. <laughs> it, it sounds like a kabuki theater where they start yelling uh, during the performance. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Sutter says uh, you need you need the likes, uh, need the likes. to, to yeah. use a, 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 a current phrase. Yeah, a um, lot of pressure for sure. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a lot of pressure. Well, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're coming toward the end of the uh, program here. Uh, um, any, uh, any suggestions for those traveling to uh, uh, China who are, uh, have Additional interest in uh, Chinese theater? Hmm. I guess I hope this is kind of like a starter point of uh, us decoding Situ performance. So when you go over and when you are invited by families and friends or your colleagues, um, just go for it. And when you don't know what's going on, just ask, so what does that mean? And they would be more than happy to answer any questions because Situ audiences are very, very enthusiastic. Um, and so, and also if you want to know a little bit more about Situ, short videos are kind of a really neat, handy tool for you to get to know the, the art form and whatnot because they, it takes a lot of energy to synthesize, to boil down a massive amount of information within 15 seconds to like 60 seconds. So if you want to quickly learn something, uh, you could go through, uh, go on Bilibili or uh, TikTok. You could search for, uh, for example, Guo Xiaojing, the person I just showed you, she did a demo of uh, how you do the whole makeup and this and that. Um, so yeah, a, don't be afraid of asking any questions because questions are so, so welcome. They love questions because that's how you start the conversation. That's how you communicate. And secondly, uh, short videos is a great way uh, to get to know this art form when the information are condensed within like 15 seconds. 
Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Yuting. Uh, I certainly learned a lot, and I'm sure uh, uh, the audience did as well.